שלום, אסלאם עליכה. אנא אל-מוהדי. I'm going to tell you guys uh, something. So everybody, anybody, I don't care who you are, what you claim to be. All right? To me, that is moot. For in the truth, we live. In the truth, we dwell. All those outside of it are liars and thieves and other things. Here's the truth. All people right now that are, have the breath of life in you, you're living right now. You're on the earth and you're alive right now. I'm going to tell you a truth and you need to understand that it's truth so you can move forward. It is written in the word of God that everybody who is alive right now If you're claiming that Abraham, Abraham, Ibrahim, Abraham, whatever tongue you want to call, Abraham, Abba, the, the, the Abba Choruch, the Abba Roch, you know what the Abba Roch is? Abba is father, Roch is spirit. If you put the Ha in the middle of it, It becomes a aware, a living, a, a life in a manner, being. So before the father, Roch, he just fathers spirit. Ibrahim, Abba, Ram, Rach, Abba, Roch. So in Abba, Roch, the Abra Abraham, at yeah, first he's just stagnant. Worshipping idols, doing the same practices of shirk as all those that came before him had been doing from their genealogies. Now, Abba Roch meets God, El. Meets El Elyon, El Shaddai. Later it's known as Abba. Later it is Allah. And Abraham meets this creator and he is now aware so the creator changed his name. People need to understand that Abraham's name was not Abraham, Abraham from the beginning. His name is Abaroch, a father spirit. Spirit of the father, if you want to call it that. So his father... Um, Tara he was a priest in the uh, Ur of the Chaldeans in Mesopotamia now his father Tara he a priest so he going to name his son oh the, my father's spirit because he worshiping in a manner of shirk such a god so he's going to make his son like demi god but in a manner for the tongue you i call my son the spirit father or the father of spirits the abaroch abra abah ram so in this you get more context and text you and and uh, things like ra ra come from egypt abraham also went to egypt picking up different changing so people in the earth kept changing the original name from Abach Aram or you you have to understand that God changed his name calls him and his family out leave your father in the household leave your land leave this place and I come follow me I'll show you a place to go he's going to go to Haran in Israel but it's not Israel let yet for it is a place and I want to this is where I stress this so all of you who claim that you're from this seed Abraham your mother was a Hittite and your father was an Amorite so understand that Terah the father of Abraham 
was an Amorite and his wife was a Hittite. So in the genealogies of all these people that are claiming, they claim to be in the word with Abraham and they're not. And I'm going to show everybody this truth. So you have an understanding of something that no one teaches you. And the reason they don't teach you this is because those that are liars and thieves and devils and the jaws and brood of vipers are the ones trying to control the concept of who, who Abraham was. And I'm going to clarify exactly who my great, 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 great grandfather was using the word of God as well. So your mother was a Hittite, your father was an Amorite. Terah being an Amorite, Abraham's mom was a Hittite. And back in the ancient times, before Abraham was even born, before Abraham was even born, the Amorite kings used to go <clears throat> to Mesopotamia area and set up little <clears throat> kingdoms for themselves there. Later on, the Hittites would do the same. Therefore, thus they began mingling. So Amorites and the Hittites became a mingling uh, group of people which later would be known as the Israelites from the seed of Abba Roch or the... Now, when God changes His name, He's adding the He. The He, the H, is to be aware to be alive, to know. So now the Father Rok, the Spirit Father, is now a moving spirit, a spirit that's moving Father, and Father being guide. Because your Father is going to be your guide. So Abraham, if God comes to him, Allah comes to him, says, leave your Father, come to me, I will adopt you, you'll be my child now, you'll be my son, my Abraham, and I will make you a great nation. So Abraham did such things by knowledge of truth of knowing that they are worshipping statues and multi-gods and there is only one God and so on and so forth. This is this where this stem from. It's where it comes from, everyone. This is how the truth came to be known. Before it was known through Adam Hahawa and then through Seth and then Enos and then throughout the history it got disappeared <clears throat> and people started to chase after fantasies, dreams and hocus pocuses so God raised up Abraham calls him out adds, changes his name and now he is Abahroch Abahroch so Abba the, the, the father moving spirit and that is what Abraham became. So he moved around. As you notice, he moved. He following God. God, wherever his father now, because God now, Allah now is his father, he going there following his father. Abraham's doing this. You know, I am Imam al-Mahdi. I stand between the Kaaba and Abraham. I teach you about the Kaaba. I'll teach you about Abraham. I stand in between. I know all of it. Don't fuck around with me, Muslim. Don't fuck around with me, Christian. Don't fuck around with me, Hindu. I can even tell you where your gods came from. Don't fuck around with me, Hindu. Oh, Sufi, don't, don't fool around. I know everything there is to know about the Word of God. I am the servant of the Word. So obviously I'm going to know. So anyway, let's go back to the story where your, your, your mother is a Hittite, your father an Amorite. Ibrahim is now a changed name. He is now moving with Allah. Allah is now guiding him to different places. And now we come to this. Because you know there's a war of fighting all the time about Palestinians and the Jews. It's our land. It's our land. Our land. Our land. I'm going to get in deep into it, motherfuckers. First of all, Palestinian, you're, you're, you're just a mingled group as well. Your mother was an Amorite, or a, a Amorite and your father was a Hittite. If you want to go in that direction now. Because like I said, the Hittites used to go and the Amorites used to go back and forth conquering or setting up little villages, towns, blah, blah, blah. 
because we all know where Noah, Noah land, where Noah, Noah came from, is from the land over in Turkey and Iran, where his ship land in that area. So obviously anybody left of Noah and his children are going to be from that area, of course. But don't dare claim that it's your land. Because there's three, there's three brothers from Noah. And from those three brothers, they became Shem, Ham, Jephthah. And from there, the families broke off. To where then you get to the, after the flood, you go get into the, where Abraham is now called. Because of all the forgetfulness and the reoccurrence of things. And now they have even Canaanites are now amongst them again. For what Ham had done with Nama. So now we have all this happening in the earth again. And now it's becoming more confused and everything. So this happened. So in Palestine, all the, the fighting with the Jew in the Palestine. Let's go with the Palestinian first. Okay, for you, your, your, your mother was an Amorite and your father was a Hittite. So yes, in the reality of the sea-based reality, that really was where those people lived. But you have to make sure you're understanding the seed of what I'm talking about, because if you ain't, and you're just claiming it because you're a Muslim, get, get out of here. I don't care about your religion, motherfucker. Are we going by it? We're going by our father, the moving spirit. Not by your fantasy, hocus-pocus of your religions. Fuck that shit. So now, Palestinians, you understand where your origination come from in history. Now let's go to these Jews who are claiming that they were there. First of all, let's look. The people that claiming to be these Jews were from the Judean branch, and the Judean branch were the ones that were friendly with the Romans when the Romans were occupying the whole areas of multi-lands and these Romans had because of their genealogies and the traits and the things that they practice there was a deformity known as their aquiline nose and this is not Semitic I don't care anybody wants to try to say aquiline is not Semitic a Semitic person lived in the desert. We needed big nose, wide, wide nose, like a camel, you know. Maybe it's thin up in here and stuff, but down, once you get down here, we got to have wide nose. Not, not a hump here. That, that does not, the, that's not the meaning. And the meaning for a Mahdi, the meaning of my nose is my deformity here. So that's why they picked Aqualine. Oh, he has an Aqualine nose. Oh, nah, because they don't even... Because they are from the brood of vipers themselves. That's why they teach such foul bullshit. Because they themselves don't even have their proper history right. So therefore, they're going to coincide with these other foul Dajals teaching their fantasies. The meaning of deformity is this is deformity of Imam Mahdi. That's my deformity of my nose. These people's deformity of the aquiline come from the Romans. So any of you Jews or Judean who claiming that you're a Jew from a father of a, of a Semite, you're a liar. Your father was a Roman. If proof is in your face. Proof is on your nose to spite your face. You brood of vipers Yeshua called you because now you're running around this group running around trying to stake claim on Israelites using race because see there's all so confused first of all Israelite isn't even the race that's a name change as well and that goes back to Jacob whose father or uh, grandfather would have been Abraham, whose father was an Amorite and a Hittite. If you want to talk seed now. But then throughout there, Abraham also had a concubine named Hagar, and he had a son Ishmael. 
So we have Egyptian now from this in that seed. Amorite, Hittite, Egyptian. Sarah was from that same lineage. For that was his Abraham's uh, half sister. So they had the same uh, father, but different mothers. So let's say that Sarah's mother was not a Hittite, but her father was. And let's say Sarah's mother was a Jephite or Asiatic. Has, has anybody ever thought about this for a minute? Stop and think. You would know it is written that Abraham and Sarah were relatives by father but different mothers. Therefore, if Terah, Abraham's father, had a concubine of another seed, say, for instance, the Asiatic, a Jephoth, Shem, Ham, Jephoth, then the Canaanite, so we know it's not a Canaanite, for Sarah and Abraham did not mingle with such things, and Abraham went to battle against the Canaanites for his cousin Lot where he met Melchizedek the king of righteousness so understand that now we get even deeper into it right so now let's say for instance that Sarah was an Amorite and a Asian so I have a friend his wife is a Indian, Hindi, Indian, and a Malaysian. Right? You understand? So in the Hindi area, there's uh, close into the area where Mesopotamia would be. And you're starting to understand more of a what a Semite is in the manner, not what a Roman is. So then we go back into where where Rome now now you understand this that, so my friend is a Malaysian man but his wife is of that so we could say that he is Amorite Hittite in a manner you could say I'm not saying that, that you know he is Jeff up but I'm just saying showing you that Abraham is Amorite Hittite Sarah is Amorite Jephite Asiatic from Jeff Jeff right in that manner now then, therefore, you'll get into the seed that is produced from Abraham and Sarah. So, and the seed that is produced from Abraham and Hagar. So now you're starting to get, he is a father of many nations, is starting to be. Just like God, Allah, said to him. Just like it. Understand? So this is what's happening. So when people start to argue and fight and say, oh, this is our land, this is our... No, it's not, none of your fucking lands. None of you. Because in the reality of the manner, as I'm trying to explain to you, none of you by seed belong there. Only people that belong there are those of spirit. And I'll get into that. So now we'll go into the understanding of Sarah, who Sarah was, as a wife, being the wife of Abraham and the half-sister, sharing the same father, a different mother. Then later they traveling, and you'll get into their son Isaac, and Isaac marries his wife from whom? It even tells you that go to a place called Padan Aran. Padan Aran. So that is a area that we could kind of really closely relate with as in the in the in the sense of the Mesopotamian area but a more specific uh, area of seed that is a more dominant because the father is an Amorite and the mother's a Hittite and and the Amorite father maybe has the Jephite wife, a Hittite wife, or so on and so forth, but these are the male 
is the Amorite still, so you're going to go into that seat of Amorite area of the Mesopotamian lands where Ur is. You come and find the place called Padam Aram, and that is where most of his sons get their wives from. So they have from the monks their own seed in that manner. So it's very uh, a certain happening starts to happen that Abraham is being aware or told about to stick with his seed his own kind stop stop all that nonsense he did it all happened and Sarah told him to you know but stop it and you stick to your seed and then the seed becomes more pure in the manner that way Yeshua can be born later on Isa is born later on all right so we're trying to become more like Noah in the seed Noah was a man pure and found righteous and pure in the eyes of God understand his seed and then he got angry when he found out that one of his seed Ham had sex with Cain's great-granddaughter Nama which was his servant girl and Noah's servant girl at the time so he said cursed be Canaan a slave of slave Nama his mother being a slave to Noah a slave of slaves you shall be forever and later these become Canaanites because the Tav is added so you look out and you try to find which race of uh, people has the chromosome added uh, you are Ham's uh, and in the manner you are Ham and Nama's children so your father was a Ham and your mother was a Namite and we call you today you're African understand now so I can I can clean everybody up if you want me to in that manner because like I say I stand between the Kaaba and Abraham if you look at it in the manner of do you know what the Kaaba is about what's about what's it about oh that's where all his sons he gathered his sons together to build something but really it's not in Mecca it's in the valley of weeping and that's in Mecca uh, Becca and that's Petra by the way over by Jordan not Saudi just for you guys to understand and that's where you'll find the original rocks that the Jew wears on his head the little black square you find the original in Petra not Mecca you find it in the Valley of Tears the Valley of Weeping in Becca just to reiterate on that so then as we go along we come into these Jews again for later on it's the Judean who who befriends the Romans and they start to mingle and the Romans give them positions of power like I say because of their sons how long did Rome occupy Israel so how many generations went and and they did they create sons or daughters through their mingling that they allowed them positions of authority and power like it is in America today we're about 250 years old uh, 300 whatever you go and just within that period you see the families of our America that's trying to take and rule and what they're all about and what they're doing and their activities their sins being publicly shamed openly for what they're doing right you see this all of this it's all there and that becomes to collapse when you see that because that's the same as King Dawad when King Dawad and all his concubines Solomon all his concubines and what his sons did to him by sleeping with all his wives concubines all this stuff all that sin maybe drug use uh, intoxication alcohol now the wives and sons are all uh, you know understand what I'm saying that collapsed Israel and Israel, Israel collapsed and they went into captivity same thing that you look at your nations today when you see their the leaders starting to do this type of activity your nation's about to collapse so in that time period they create these aquiline nose roman judeans later ashkenazis which now are known as the Zionist group and these groups 
are friends with the radical Muslims and they're friends with the radical Christians so you got the radical Muslims the radical Christians and the radical Jews wanting to revive the Roman Empire to have a global rule and they'll use their religion denying that Jesus Christ is the Son of Allah or the begotten Word or at least is directly from Allah. He's part of Allah, no way, shape or form. He's directly spoken by Him. And you're created through that. And this Roman Empire wants to rise itself back up again. And these foul Jews and these foul Muslims and these foul Christians, and you can clearly see them when you listen to what I'm telling you. And then your 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 dead man grave of religion shirk shit that you're stuck in that they forced you in, making you think that it was the right belief and the right interpretations of God's word. Moses turned sticks into snakes, hocus pocus witchcraft. But they teach it. The Jews taught it, those brood of vipers. The Muslims taught it, those brood of vipers. And the Christian taught it, those brood of vipers. So who where's the real true story? Well, you're going to have to go find the children of Abraham, me, and we'll tell you. Because the Egyptians know, in a manner of their own language reading and understanding of Hagar, Ishmael, the closest knit group, them, they'll know that what I say about it is true, about Wajit and the, the, the Pharaoh's crook, so on and so forth. They'll know. Hagar would have taught her son all about that. So I'm just trying to show you guys and clarify to you that I, I got I got proof when I when I speak. I got more proof than what I even tell people. And I can go deep into it, the all of it and get real deep to where you you can't deny the proof, nor can you deny that God is actually telling me because who, who would know this but God alone? Only God would know such a thing. And only God could be able, like, like there's things that Muhammad knew. How did Muhammad knew shit about me? Only way Muhammad would have known what I looked like and my scar and all anything is that Allah must have told him in some manner. You understand? And I, that's why I believe. And I, I, I have to believe because I am who I am and, and I'm spoken about. So that also verifies to me, yeah. I have to believe, uh, and Mo Muhammad is a prophet in the manner of even what Yeshua spoke. Shh, other flock not of this fold. I understand that very well. But all of you have been be bewitched in your dead man graves that you are following in. Because all of you have got that foul Jew, foul Muslim, and foul Christian story line. And that Roman Empire wants to rise up again, and you can see it because you got the, these foul Christian LGBT. Ah, we can all be gay. We can commit abomination. God loves you. God does this. God, oh, we can be alcoholics, and God will love us. No, you got the struggle in all the sins. Sure, there's times you'll backslide, but God forgave Israel for its backsliding, and He loved them again. Same manner with us. Same manner with you. In that manner, right? So. All of this is going on and you have to understand that this old dragon lie, this old serpent lie from the Garden of Eden, because who was it that was denying, oh, did God say don't eat from this tree? No, 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 eat from this. Don't eat from the tree of life. Forget about Jesus. Forget about Yeshua. Forget about Isa. Don't fool with that tree. Come and eat this tree. That's what they've always been telling you. And they have religions tell you to this day, we have the right interpretation. We know what we're talking. You're foul, man. There's only one way, one truth, one light, one tree that's ever begotten by the Most High God, spoken into existence and given to a gift as a gift to Miriam. Fact. And any of you who claim to be Abraham's children, you better fucking understand that because when I come, you're a kafar if you deny it. Don't claim to be of my grandfather when you're a fool. So now you understand 
in the manner that those that are not of the seed but believe that truth, you'll be, a, you'll be adopted into our family. Just because you believe, it's counted unto you as righteousness. Even though you might not even be a part of our seed, you could be an African. And you believe, you're part of our family as well now. It's in spirit. Flesh is meaningless. Spirit that gives life. Understand now? Abraham, Allah, gave him new name. Now he's just a father spirit. Now he's alive. Now he's a moving spirit. And that's what give Abraham life. And Abraham believed it. And he's counted unto him as righteousness. Never forget that, motherfuckers, when you sit around and you and you boast along with the wicked Jew and the wicked Christian and the wicked Muslim denying denying that Allah spoke his own salvation for you into existence because it's his life his experience his everything you're just sharing in what he's allowing you to experience in his creation So now you understand the Roman Empire, the second rise of this Antichrist, the Jal movement rising up. And this group wants all this AI and technology. You clearly can see this. Because it's all about profit and money. Even in Saudi Arabia, they've been trying to build a city that become all digital city. Uh, understand all of it all of it is for this this movement if you're following along in your religion and they're they're going along with that obviously if they're going along with this following of these Jews these Christians and these Muslims of this radical foulness if you're following along with that you you better understand you're on the wrong side and you're in a dead man grave there is no life in the grave it's for dead people. Why are you in it? You want to claim to be alive? Why the fuck are you in a dead man grave? You should be following the voice of the Most High God, like Abraham did. Not following the voice of these men. No, what does the voice of Allah tell you? Oh, we can distinguish between it. We know if it's a bad voice or if it's a good voice because the Most High God already separated the light from the darkness. So if you go around trying to tell me it's okay if I am this manner when I know that the word states too much of anything is sin and some things are better left not to be touched or eaten as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we know all these truths. I don't need shirk. I don't need all the nonsense. I don't need your dead man grave. What I know and what I hear in the living is the voice of the Most High God. And that is who I shall follow. For that is who Abraham followed. And that is who all the prophets followed, if you really think about it. Who did all the prophets follow? Oh, they heard. They heard the, of the voice of the Lord came unto them. Or the word of God appeared unto them? How did the word appear? Yeah, you better understand what I'm telling all of you. Wake up. I am the Imam. In a manner like, like, can you really believe that? I can't believe it. Like, I, I know that I am an Imam. Or what you would call a priest, a Kohen, a preacher, a teacher of reverend. I know I am, my character is that. Like the things that I ponder and think and that is my business. So when people, what do you do for, for a work? The word of God. That is my business. But I don't practice it in a manner that people go and they join up in religions and they get their certificates and their title and their outfit and then they go and they hold assemblies. I don't do that. And it's funny because I am really a real Kohen, a real priest. Like I am like chosen, like, like God make me this way. 
I did not go. I want to go and be a priest. I want to go be an imam, so I got to go to the school. I not choose to be this way. That's a difference between me, prophets. We don't choose. We got chosen. And that is my charter. If you, because people, what is your charter? If you're a mom, what's your charter? So the words that I'm trying to explain to you, that right there verifies, that should tell you a lot, that I know a lot more than your religious teachers, Ayatollahs or any of them. I know a lot more than they do. I can get really deep into it. And I can connect it all together in ways that no one has ever seen. It is all there. We just blind and we need to see it and once you see it you're aware you're awake you're hey hey the alphabet of Hebrew is hey you're now aware you're now awake you're conscious of the God of the Most High the only one and when God wants to prove to you and anybody that he is real like when someone says prove God exists well there's only one way that anyone can prove that Allah exists physically like you know um, the the admiral admir, admir uh, or empirical the empirical law the empirical evidence of does God exist? Can anybody prove the empirical pr evidence that there is God in existence? The answer is nobody can that is alive like a human being in the manner of the earth. Nobody can. But there is one who can because that one who is what we are in the image and likeness of, where we came from, that one is the very spirit of Allah. Miriam gave him a name, Yahshua. Isa, Jesus. That one can prove that God exists. Do you understand the, the why there is the... You must understand that if you don't believe in the sun, you have no life. Because you, you can't prove without the sun, you can't prove that there is a God. With empirical evidence. Oh, but if Jesus comes and appears like boom and starts to do make things live and give make forms clay and breathes life and things are you better understand that the kingdom of God has now came upon you you understand what I'm trying to explain that get, shatters the arguments where scientists and and philosophers theologians they all argue we want empirical evidence no one can give empirical evidence but nor can the scientists give their empirical evidence either. Because there's something missing. What's missing? The physical. The physical. Where's the physical at? Well, he's appointed by God, by Allah. He's appointed. Appointed where? Where? Well, where God is, is where Yeshua is. Where God is, is where Jesus is. If you're looking for Allah, you will find Isa there. Do you understand this, Muslim? There is no way around this empirical evidence that you must have. Do you have a lamb of blood to sacrifice for your sin? Not of the flesh, the sin of your spirit. 
Do you have the lamb that was offered? It is Allah's lamb. You don't have one? You, you have to understand it's His dream. It's His way. It's His lamb. It's His life. It's His body. It's His image and likeness that you are in. Can I get any clearer for you? Do you believe now? Do you understand now? No, we don't worship images of Allah. In, the, in that manner of the first commandment. That is why Jesus said, don't worship me, worship God, worship Allah. Give Allah praise and thanks. Because at that time, Allah separated flesh from himself and he still though guided being in that guiding that flesh in perfection because that is him his only way only truth only light and you're made in the image and likeness of that Do you think you can bear the struggle that Isa had? Can you know that you're going to die a very gruesome, painful, torturous death? Foresee it and know it? Are you going to walk into it? Would you? Would you walk into it? Knowing? No man would. For we are not Allah. But one man would. For Allah is in him. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum.